Satan is used 52 times in the Bible. It means adversary or opposer, and it designates this person as an enemy of God whose goal is to establish a counterfeit kingdom. Number 1. Devil Luke chapter 4, verse 2 Where for forty days he was tempted by the devil, he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Luke chapter 4, verse 13 When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Another common title, devil, is used 35 times. The Greek diabolos means slander or one who trips up. It depicts this person as spreading maliciously false reports that harm the reputation of others. The devil seeks to discredit God. He also seeks to discredit believers. Number 2. The Serpent of Old And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who is called the devil, and Satan, he who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. This name refers to Satan's first appearance in the Bible when he stalked Eve in Genesis chapter 3 and caused the fall of man. Old implies he has been around for a long time and is well known. There was no need for Paul to clarify his use of serpent as referring to Satan. To the Corinthians, he wrote, But I am afraid, lest as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your mind should be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 Later, in the same passage, he refers to false apostles as Satan's servants. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, Amplified Bible. For such men are counterfeit apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, but their end will correspond with their deeds. The serpent is clearly associated with Satan. The trait that stands out is cunning deception. Number 3. Great Dragon Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. Then another sign of warning was seen in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, Satan, with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven royal crowns, diadems. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven, Michael, the archangel, and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. The true nature of the cunning serpent is revealed. With this title, he is portrayed as a terrifying, destructive beast whose wrath against God and his people seeks to completely destroy them. In addition to Great Dragon, he is also known as Great Red Dragon and Dragon. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 through 4, Amplified Bible. As a result, he has an army of angels who join him in his destructive war against Christ and his people. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, Amplified Bible. So the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went off to wage war on the rest of her children, seed, those who keep and obey the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, holding firmly to it and bearing witness to him. Number 4. The Evil One 1 John chapter 5, verse 18 We know with confidence that anyone born of God does not habitually sin, but he, Jesus, who was born of God carefully keeps and protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. John chapter 17, verse 15. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but that you keep them and protect them from the evil one. The character and influence of Satan extends to the world, cosmos, under Satan's influence and control. Christ prayed that believers would be protected from the evil one's power, which pervades the entire world. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. We know for a fact that we are of God, and the whole world around us lies in the power of the evil one, opposing God and his precepts. According to several translations, 1 John chapter 5 verse 18 says the same thing as John chapter 17 verse 15, that the Son of God keeps all those born of God from the power of the evil one, Satan.